Good day everyone, Tim from Timber Visions here. I'm coming to you from my living room because it is freaking cold outside. And today I thought that I've been kind of wanting to do um, kind of a series on the, the subject here. The different types of firewood and when to use them. And I'm going to start with the wood that I use primarily in the, the shoulder season. So um, fall into winter and then winter into spring. And that is silver maple. Now, I've had so many people when I'm doing uh, firewood videos in the comments, they'll say maple for firewood, uh, you know, like questioning using maple as firewood. Um, I, I know some people are snobs and, and whatnot. You have to have oak or, or locust or hickory or whatever. And if you have those in your area, great, you know, go for it. But in my area, silver maple grows like weeds. You know, they're, they're everywhere. Um, they're a fairly popular yard tree in this area or in a grove for windbreaks um, and at farmhouses. So they are everywhere here and they grow fast and they grow big. And yes, their heat output isn't that great, okay? Heating value of, of uh, wood here. So when you look at the silver maple, it puts out 21.7 million BTUs per per cord. Uh, so what that uh, BTU is a British thermal unit. It's a, um, it's how you judge the amount of heat transfer. Okay. So if you were to burn an entire cord of just silver maple, you would get 21,700,000 BTUs from that cord of wood. Okay. So if you compare that to um, red maple, that gets 24 million, okay? So it's lower than red maple for the heat output. However, this stuff, I think all maple dries pretty quick, but um, maple does dry quick. I mean, I can, I can buck it up, split it, and within a couple months, it's below 20% you know, if it's not being soaked with rain the entire time. If you got it in a good area where the wind can go through, that, that stuff's gonna dry pretty quick, unlike oak. So let's see here, uh, a white oak. Um, that puts out 30.6 million BTUs per cord, but that takes like two years to dry, okay? So, I mean, I. I did have some burr oak, which is a white oak, and I processed that two years ago, and I'm just now burning it in my stove because it takes that long to dry it. And I even split it down small um, to help with the process of, of drying it. But that's what I'm burning right now. It's 15 below zero Fahrenheit outside right now. So. That's why I'm in here doing this video instead of out doing something. Um, but this is the time of year that you save your oak for, right? Um, but anyway, the silver maple, it's, it's not a bad wood, right? I mean, there are, you know, basswood is lower, white pine's lower, poplar's lower, butternut's lower. Aspen's lower, hemlock's lower, you know. So there's there's a lot of a lot of woods that are worse than silver maple. Um, I figure if you're if you're in the low, at least low twenty million BTUs, you're doing okay. So I have a lot of green ash also that I burn, and I'll burn that when it's cold out as well and that's only 22.1 million BTUs so it's not even that much higher than silver maple so it's it's a 
it's a pretty nice, pretty nice wood. So identifying silver maple in the summertime is fairly easy. Well, pretty much any time. Uh, the bark is way different than any of the other maple trees. To me, the bark on a silver maple looks very similar to shag bark hickory, right? It's got those long sheets of, of bark, you know, that kind of, it doesn't come off on each end like shag bark does, but it'll, it's fairly easy to peel off if, you know, if you grab some of it and it's like a plate, you know, of bark, you can just pop off. So, and then also the, the leaves um, on the lobes for silver maple, they come in way further than all the other maples. Um, so it, it's fairly easy to, to distinguish the silver maple from, from other maples. Where it gets trickier for me is between a red maple and a sugar maple or a rock maple. Sugar maple is called a lot of different things. Um, hard maple, sugar maple, rock maple. Um, and silver maple is called soft maple many times. Uh, but red, wood, red maple is also called soft maple because they are softer than sugar maple. But I don't know that I've even seen uh, sugar maple in my area um, here in northwest Iowa. I don't, I don't know that it even grows here. If it does, I've never seen it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a nice nice uh, shoulder season wood. It's you know similar to like poplar or something like that. You know you do get some decent heat out of it. It does light fairly easy, which is what I like about it. And the smell is is quite pleasant actually. Um, I'd rather smell maple and ash in my stove than oak and. Kentucky coffee tree. I personally don't really care for the smell of Kentucky coffee tree, but I have a, had quite a bit of it and I'm um, burning through it here um, during the colder months of, the, of, the, of this winter. But yeah, so don't just discard your silver maple. It, and also for me in my business, uh, silver maple is a great bundle wood. It's, you know, fairly straight grained, you know, if you stay away from the limbs and, um, and it splits really easy and I can make those perfect little three by three or four inch, you know, blocks of, of firewood to, to make my bundles out of. And it's, it's really nice for that. So, um, if you do have silver maple in your area, don't discount that as a decent firewood. I know a lot of people turn their nose up at maple, but I certainly do not. I'm planning on doing some more of these types of videos, uh, the different types of wood that I personally burn in my wood stove, and um, you know maybe something that you might consider in your wood stove. And for a lot of my viewers, this might just be like, duh, Tim, we already knew this information, but you know, there are a lot of people out there that might be interested in learning about this, the different types of wood and which ones are good for heating and what time of the year is best to use them for heating. So that's why I'm doing this video. So there will be more in the future. I don't know if I'm going to do one a week or, or what through the winter here. It'd be nice to have, have a topic like this that I can work on, um, when it's super cold outside and, you know, it's not worth going out there to, to try to do anything because it's just too cold. Um, of course, if it snows or whatever, you'll there will be videos still showing some snow pushing or whatever. And if it, the weather gets decent, we'll probably get back in the wood, wood yard for folks that are interested in that type of content. But hopefully you found this information uh, interesting. Until next time, be safe, brothers and sisters.